Hello and welcome to Science Specialists. My name is Dr. Nick Andrew. I'm an ophthalmologist trained in Australia, New Zealand and Canada, and my specific expertise are in surgical vision correction and glaucoma microsurgery. So I created this clinic, Science Specialists, because I wanted to do things differently. I wanted my team and I to be able to provide absolute state-of-the-art eye care using the very latest technology, but in a centre that is warm, welcoming and puts you, the patient, first. So before you see my team and I, I'd like to show you this short video, as using the aid of animations, I can provide more complete information than what I can explain in person. I want you to be as informed as possible about your treatment options so that you get the very most from your visit here today. Rather than having to review the basics, we'll then be able to focus on your specific situation. So have you ever wondered why some people need glasses and others don't? Well, to understand this, I first need to explain the anatomy of the eye. So this is a cross-section through the eye. This is the cornea, the clear window at the front of the eye. This is the iris, which is the coloured part of the eye. This is the lens, which sits just behind your pupil. This is the retina, which is the camera film at the back of the eye. And this is the optic nerve, which is the cable that transmits the image back to the brain. Just like we all grow to be different heights, so do our eyes grow to be different sizes. Everyone's eyes are quite different. Any two people will have eyes of different dimensions and their corneas will be a different curvature. This is why some of us need glasses and others don't. It's the role of the cornea and the lens to focus the incoming light onto your retina. To understand the eye, you need to think of every object as being a light source that is emitting light towards you. For example, when you look at a street sign in the distance, light is leaving that street sign and travelling towards you. When that light reaches your eye, your cornea and lens must focus the light onto your retina. If the light focuses on your retina and your retina is healthy, then you will see the street sign clearly without glasses. Instead, if your cornea and lens focus the light in front of your retina, then the street sign will look blurry. This is called myopia or nearsightedness. People with myopia need glasses for distance vision, but they can still see quite clearly up close without their glasses. If your cornea and lens focus the light behind your retina, this is called hyperopia or farsightedness. Patients with hyperopia will see the horizon as slightly blurry, and objects will get increasingly blurrier the closer they get, i.e. these patients will need glasses for almost everything. You can tell if someone is hyperopic because their glasses make their eyes look slightly bigger. Fortunately though, many people with farsightedness don't actually need glasses at all when they are young. This is because while they are young, the lens inside of their eye has enough elasticity and focusing power that it can pull the incoming light into focus for them and compensate for their underlying farsightedness. Astigmatism is where your cornea is shaped like a rugby ball rather than a bowling ball. Astigmatism causes objects to appear stretched or elongated in one direction. However, people with astigmatism usually don't realise that their vision is stretched, they just say that their eyesight is blurry. And finally, we come to presbyopia. The lens of inside of our eye is about the size and shape of a Smartie. When we are young, our lens is soft and elastic. It can change shape to allow us to change our focus from looking in the far distance to looking at something up close. This ability to change our focus is called accommodation. But around the age of 45, our lens becomes stiff, causing our near point of focus to get further and further away. And this is called presbyopia. It is why people who previously saw perfectly will start to need reading glasses around the age of 45. When you're in your 60s, your lens will inevitably turn cloudy, which is called cataract. When this happens, not even glasses will give you sharp vision, and you'll need cataract surgery to replace the lens inside of your eye with a clear artificial lens. Now these terms I've just described don't operate in isolation. Just like someone can be tall and also be heavyset or thin, Likewise, someone can be far-sighted and also have astigmatism and also be presbyopic. I.e. most people who wear glasses have a combination of focusing problems. It's my job as an eye specialist to understand the unique problems of your eyesight and customise the best possible solution for you. Now obviously, focus error can be compensated for with glasses or with contact lenses. Your local optometrist is the expert for prescribing these for you. However, if you want to correct your vision surgically, then there are three main approaches. The first is corneal laser vision correction. Remember the cornea is the clear window at the front of the eye. Laser vision correction involves using a laser to precisely remove tissue from your cornea in order to permanently change its curvature. If you are nearsighted or myopic, then essentially your cornea has too much focusing power. 
and therefore we use the laser to flatten the curvature of your cornea, and this works very well. If you are far-sighted or hyperopic, then your cornea doesn't have enough focusing power, and therefore we use the laser to steepen the curvature of your cornea. Unfortunately though, when you steepen a cornea, it tends to return back towards its original shape, i.e. the benefit of the laser wears off. For this reason, laser is not commonly recommended for the treatment of far-sightedness. There are three ways to use laser to reshape your cornea. The surface ablation, or PRK, is where the laser is applied directly to the surface of your cornea. There's LASIK, is where a thin flap of cornea is lifted, laser is applied to the cornea, and the flap is then laid back into position. And there's lenticule extraction, sometimes known as keyhole LASIK, smile or silk. This involves using a laser to create a thin disc of tissue within the cornea. This is then removed via a keyhole incision. These three techniques differ in terms of their speed of recovery and potential risks, but comparing the advantages and limitations of each technique is simply too much to cover in this video. Corneal laser vision correction is an excellent procedure that is performed on millions of eyes around the world each year. The advantages of laser vision correction are, it is fast, elegant surgery, with each eye taking only a few minutes to treat. It achieves accurate results. It has fast recovery, with most patients seeing well the next day. It has a long track record, and provided that it's performed by an experienced surgeon, laser has an excellent safety profile. As such, even fighter pilots and astronauts are permitted to have laser vision correction these days. Now, the disadvantages of laser vision correction include the following. Not every eye is suitable for laser vision correction, i.e. laser isn't able to treat everybody. This is because laser permanently removes tissue from your cornea. It thins your cornea down. If your focus error requires a lot of tissue to be removed, or if your cornea is already weak to begin with, then performing laser could critically weaken your cornea. As such, you'll be told that your eyes aren't suitable for laser. The second limitation is that laser can exacerbate dry eye symptoms. This is usually not a problem in young people, but it can definitely be a problem in older people having laser, especially if that person has signs of dry eye to begin with. If you already have mild, relatively asymptomatic dry eye disease, then there is a chance that having laser will result in you needing to use lubricant eye drops regularly. The third limitation is that if laser is not done well, you can see ghosting around objects, particularly at night time. Laser changes the shape of your cornea and the new shape has an unnatural, irregular curvature to it. As light passes through this irregular corneal shape, some of that incoming light gets scrambled and disorganized. If your eyes only need a very small amount of laser, then this problem won't be noticeable to you. But if you need a lot of laser to refocus your vision, then your corneal curvature is going to be very irregular. And you may notice that although you no longer need your glasses, your eyesight just isn't as crisp and it has some softness to it. This scrambled light is most noticeable at nighttime, causing these patients to sometimes see flaring or rings around the headlights and taillights of cars. I'll show you an example of what I mean. Here's a patient with a perfectly healthy cornea. This image shows a map of their corneal curvature. We read it like a geography map, where warm colours are steeper and cooler colours are flatter. The patient has a perfect cornea that is beautifully round and smooth. And here's the computer simulation of what their eye is capable of seeing, a nice, sharp image. And here is a patient who had a very large amount of LASIK to treat severe nearsightedness. You can see that the laser has flattened the centre of their cornea. As a result, the shape of their cornea is very irregular and unnatural. This person no longer needs their powerful glasses, but what they see is not crystal clear. It has softness to it. And when they drive at night, they would certainly see flaring and rings around lights. And here's a computer simulation of what their eye saw before LASIK without glasses, completely blurred. But here's what it sees after LASIK without glasses. Certainly better, but due to the very irregular shape of their cornea, the image is still somewhat blurry, and glasses won't be able to make this clearer. Now this is a fairly extreme example, and most people having laser vision correction these days will achieve better clarity of vision than this. However, the key point is that if you are considering laser, always see a specialist who is experienced, considered, and somewhat conservative. Just because your strong glasses script can be treated with laser, doesn't mean that you necessarily should have laser, because there might be other procedures that give you a better result. The final limitation of laser is that the change to your corneal shape is permanent and irreversible. Laser removes tissue from your cornea, and that tissue can never be replaced. Therefore, laser can never be undone. 
In general, this is a good thing because it means that you keep the benefits of laser for many years. However, when you're in your 60s, you'll develop cataract and you'll need cataract surgery. But if you've had laser, then your eyes are unlikely to be well suited to the most state-of-the-art lens implants available. Instead, patients who had LASIK often need to have a simpler form of cataract surgery and their vision is not quite as good as the patients who never had LASIK. Therefore, having laser can be a big advantage to you while you're young, but it can be a small disadvantage to you later in life. In summary, laser is excellent for treating mild and moderate focus errors and it has a long track record of success. But if your glasses are very strong or if you already have dry eye symptoms, then laser might not be a good choice for you. You might have a much better result with a different surgical approach. And this brings us to our next option for surgical vision correction, which is phakic intraocular lenses. Now a phakic intraocular lens is a small, thin plastic lens that is positioned inside of your eye to refocus your vision. Think of it like a contact lens that remains inside of your eye. You can't feel the lens and you can't see it. For a phakic intraocular lens, I'm not doing anything permanent to your eyes. All I'm doing is making a small incision in the surface of the eye and then inserting a thin, soft plastic lens. Because of its reversibility, the surgery is sometimes referred to as reversible refractive surgery or corneal sparing refractive surgery. There are two main types of phakic intraocular lenses. There are lenses that go behind your iris, which are commonly known as ICLs, and there are lenses that go in front of your iris, which are called Artiflex lenses. I feel that Artiflex lenses give my patients slightly better clarity of vision and better night driving vision, but they are technically more difficult to implant, therefore Artiflex lenses are not as commonly available as ICLs. The advantages of treating focus error with a phakic intraocular lens include the following. Number one, this surgery is reversible. We are putting a lens into the eye and we can simply take it out anytime in the future if we want to. The surgery can be undone. This is a big difference to laser vision correction. Number two, phakic intraocular lenses do not disrupt the shape of your cornea. Because your natural corneal shape is left undisturbed, this surgery can offer you extremely sharp vision. You also remain suitable for state-of-the-art cataract surgery options in the future. Number three, a phakic intraocular lens can treat a huge range of patients, including patients who are unsuitable for laser vision correction. Number four, phakic intraocular lenses can give you very clear vision for night driving. This advantage is most pronounced in people who have a high focus error or who have large pupils. Number five, phakic intraocular lenses don't exacerbate dry eye. Therefore, this surgery is a good option for people who already suffer from dry eye or who just don't want to risk making their dry eye symptoms any worse. And number six, the operation is usually done with you completely asleep. So rest assured, you will have absolutely no recollection of the surgery whatsoever. So let's now consider the potential limitations of phakic intraocular lenses. So number one, these lenses go inside of your eye. This is intraocular surgery, in contrast to laser, which is just on the surface of your eye. As such, the potential complications are more serious. Fortunately though, the likelihood of anything serious happening is still extremely low. In my clinic, we screen your eyes incredibly rigorously to ensure that you are not at increased risk of problems. The second key limitation is cost. Because fake intraocular lenses are intraocular surgery performed in a hospital with an anaesthetist, this is much more expensive surgery than laser vision correction. Given that price difference, laser vision correction is generally preferred for patients with low or moderate focus errors, and fake intraocular lenses are usually done for people who have high focus error, whose eyes are not well suited to laser, who have dry eye, or who just like the idea of having a reversible treatment. And this brings us to our final approach for surgical vision correction, which is called refractive lensectomy, or permanent lens exchange. This is simply doing cataract surgery before you actually develop a cataract, with the goal of dramatically reducing your need to ever use glasses. So I perform this surgery as a walk-in, walk-out procedure in a day surgery. And yes, you are completely asleep. During the surgery, I make a tiny two millimeter incision in the outer corner of your eye. I remove your natural lens and I replace it with a new artificial lens implant that permanently refocuses your eyesight for you. Although I'm comfortable changing the lens over if ever required, lens replacement surgery is generally a once in a lifetime procedure. The key advantages of a refractive lensectomy is that it is a permanent correction of your vision. Assuming that you achieve a good result, then you can expect to maintain that clear vision for the rest of your life without ever needing another eye operation i.e. refractive lensectomy can last you a lifetime. Now, there are two main limitations with refractive lensectomy. The first is that this is intraocular surgery, and therefore, like phakic intraocular lenses, the potential complications are more serious. 
Fortunately though, those complications are rare and most can be fixed. The key risk with refractive lensectomy is a post-operative retinal detachment. This is where the retina, which is the camera film at the back of your eye, starts to peel itself away from the eye. The risk of this happening is very low in some eyes, less than 1%, but is very high in some other eyes at more than 15%. People at highest risk of retinal detachment are those who are nearsighted with large eyes and brittle retinas. For my patients, I use my diagnostic equipment and my own software to specifically calculate the risk of them suffering a post-operative retinal detachment. This ensures that I identify all patients who are at increased risk of this problem. The key thing is that refractive lensectomy simply has to be done well. Make sure you see someone who really knows what they are doing and has mastered their results. Refractive lensectomy is truly an art. The results can be brilliant, but achieving outcomes that are consistently excellent requires a meticulous approach and a lot of attention to detail. These days, there are a huge number of different intraocular lens models to choose from. My task is to take whatever eyes you have and then customize a surgical plan that will achieve the very best vision that your eyes are capable of seeing. So, now that you understand the different ways of correcting your eyesight, how do we work out which is the best solution for you? So my approach is to do this scientifically. My team use advanced diagnostic technology to measure absolutely everything there is about your eyes. We then input your data into my own custom-built software, which calculates your exact suitability for each surgical procedure, as well as your expected quality of vision and statistical risks. It's the most comprehensive approach possible, and not a stone is left unturned. Okay, well, we've covered a lot. I hope you found that interesting and useful. I'd be more than happy to see you at my clinic in the Gold Coast, Australia, or if you live abroad, I wish you all the very best for your journey towards better vision.